All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Brooke Stidham. I'm the principal at the Dexter Early Elementary Complex. Uh, you'll also see with us Katie Hakela, who's our assistant principal here. Um, we will get started. Um, I just want to be mindful of your time. Um, like I mentioned before, we'll record this um, information night. This is for anyone joining us for the class of 20, uh, for the upcoming school year of 2024-2025 um, for young fives or kindergarten. So we have um, a, a ton of information to share with you. Um, there is, if you'd like to add a question, you can pop that in there. We'll have questions and answers at the end if there's something we haven't covered um, or if you'd like some more information. Um, but this is just a general overview to get you and your child ready for kindergarten. So today's agenda, like I said, we'll give some brief introductions, talk a little bit about the curriculum. A big question that I know is really the main topic that many of you have is which program should I should I choose, kindergarten or young five? So we'll talk a bit about that. Um, and then the enrollment process and some logistics. Um, we're very excited to welcome another class with us um, at the deck. So that is typically how you'll hear us refer to um, that complex on Dan Hoy is the Dexter Early Elementary Complex um, made up of the Anchor Wing and Beacon Wing. Um, if you're looking at Young Fives, um, we do have five sections of Young Fives. Um, that's That's been pretty typical the last few years. Um, and those are all housed in the Beacon Wing, um, which is to the right side. Um, and then from there, we have the buildings mirror each other. So we have almost 800 students um, across the complex that includes our, our, our early childhood special ed program, um, and then young fives kindergarten first and second grade. So it's a great place. We have 10 sections of kindergarten currently. Um, some years that fluctuates to, to 11 depending on enrollment, um, but phenomenal teachers and phenomenal staff on both sides. Um, students do will be, will be placed in one wing as they go through our complex, um, but they will have lots of crossover with the other, including um, a joint co-taught class, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit in our marketplace. So it looks really big from the outside, um, but um, we still have these wonderful small learning communities for our students. Um, and Mrs. Hakla and I are bouncing around in, in both wings all the time and getting to know um, all of our wonderful students. So um, I, this is my third year at, uh, in Dexter. Um, Mrs. Hakela has been with us here at the deck for that as well. From previous to Dexter, um, I worked in Whitmore Lake in Ann Arbor, um, has did most of my teaching in um, the lower elementary grades, first and second, um, including, you know, split classes and special ed classes, all, all of those things. And then was an administrator in Ann Arbor at a K-8 building um, prior to coming to Dexter. So we have um, a lot of experience. I'll let Ms. Hakla give her brief bio here, um, but we make a great team together. <laughs> Hi. Um, I've been in Dexter. This is my 11th year in Dexter. I was at... Mill Creek Middle School as a special education teacher, and I spent some time up at our high school, um, an alternative high school program, um, and I was excited to come back around to early elementary because that's where I started my career over in Ann Arbor, so happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can tell we uh, we have probably a lot more serious pictures that we can show, but um, our students know us for doing the silly things. Um, and this was our back to school video last year. Um, my office is out of the Beacon Wing, and Miss Hakla is in the Anchor Wing. But that um, doesn't mean that we don't share duties and responsibilities throughout the building. And you'll often see us working in each other's spaces as well. Um, once you start the enrollment process, um, you know, although we are the administrators, your main points of contact are phenomenal um, secretaries or office professionals. Um, on the anchor wing, we have Sarah Hunt and Jen Boyce. And on the beacon wing is Tori Hoffman and Sue Gowan. Sarah and Tori primarily are our enrollment secretary. So if you're having questions um, with enrollment, you'll most likely get information from them. Um, but all four work very collaboratively together, um, supporting our students 
patients' needs, often playing nurses as well in the office, um, putting on Band-Aids and checking feet uh, temperatures. And that's sort of what we've had running through our offices the last few days, um, but also hugs and high fives just for all those kids as they're walking through the door in the morning. So we are very lucky to have um, a wonderful office professional staff, and we hope you feel the same way. And so if you don't get an answer from us, um, you know, pick up the phone and they'll certainly um, be able to help you as well. So kindergarten is is so exciting for so many um, so many of our students. It's often their first foray um, into a school setting. Um, some students have daycare or preschool leading up to it, but um, we really have a tremendous amount of staff that knows a great deal about what four, five, six-year-olds need um, as they enter the start of their schooling experience. So you can tell just from you know a peek at some of these pictures, we're really trying to make it engaging engaging day to day with a variety of different activities and experiences from our students. Um, one thing that I think is really special about Dexter is that we do have multiple buildings. Um, and although they do transition from building to building every few years, the teaching staff at each of those buildings really understand the developmental needs of our students. So we are very focused at the deck on early elementary needs, um, academic and social emotional. Um, they they can the parents and us we can relate to what you are going through. We have helped, you know, several hundreds of students every year um, enter school. And we know that there's a lot of anxiety with that. You are entrusting us with your babies um, to come to school and know that we will love and care for them every day just as much as you do. So in kindergarten, um, you know, our philosophy is really to, pro to provide those foundational skills um, to set the stage for a positive learning experience um, and positive future moving through um, the schooling system at, at Dexter or anywhere. Um, we know that the main goal is to introduce and reinforce expectations and routines. Um, and, and yes, we are following our state mandated curriculum, which is the Common Core and Next Gen standards, but we know that we need to have a high focus on play and social emotional development, um, promote a love for learning, teaching them how to be good citizens in the world and engage with peers uh, and adults um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's a lot of repetition, a lot of routine, um, a lot of grace given um, to our young students as they are coming and, and that we know that, that we, we are their, their first schooling experience and really want to make that a positive one for them. So lots of hands-on learning, lots of engagement. Um, we really wanna make it fun uh, for them every day. So a typical day of learning, um, as I mentioned, we always want to try to greet our students as they come through with a high five, hug, handshake, whether it's from us at the front doors or the bus hub or the classroom. Um, and then the students often start their morning with what we call a soft start, um, which would be just an easy way in to the schooling day. So it might be um, center play if it's blocks or coloring pages, um, Play-Doh, um, some fine motor. So it's a variety of different experiences experiences and that could range day to day as well. But um, we want to give them a little bit of time to ease into the morning and then we'll start a morning meeting. So that's our first way that we can set a positive tone with expectations for the day, giving them their visual schedule and their agenda of, of what they're going to expect um, throughout the day. Um, our teachers also know that routines are really important so that our students know what to expect. So they're very thoughtful um, in making sure that the students know day to day um, and have, have that repetition. So um, part of that is built in just with the curriculum that we have. Um, this year we adopted a new um, ELA program called Bookworms. So you'll often hear that um, um, shared by our kindergarten teachers, um, but that involves shared reading. So lots of read alouds, um, a writing portion where we're teaching some sentence composing, some grammar, some handwriting. Um, our goal in kindergarten is for students to write you know, one or two very good sentences with a capital letter and a period. So we are teaching them how to make, um, how to how to form those letters, how to put uh, how to letters and make sounds and how to put those into words 
to, to really scaffold that learning. Um, we also do a differentiated instruction block so that we can support each student in their reading development where they need to be. Um, and so some teachers will refer to that as DI. Uh, just want to, there's a lot of lingo in education as there is probably in other fields, but once we are, we are living it, we wanna make sure we explain what that means. But um, differentiated instruction is really a crux of what we do um, in the K-2 so that we can, we can, can meet all those different needs. Um, but we do rely heavily on phonics and phonemic awareness instruction. Um, there's been a lot of research over the last few years. Some of you may have heard about you know, science of reading. Um, so that's really understanding how the brain works to, to learn those early foundational skills. And that's something that our teachers have had a lot of um, training on and experience on and making sure that we're embedding that daily into our practice. Um, we use a math program called Everyday Math, um, which is very hands-on in kindergarten. Um, Young Fives has a variation of this, but it's, it's very game-based, um, center-based, so that our students are understanding um, uh, numer numerology and basic counting principles in a fun way. Um, but we also teach science and social studies or STEM even um, so that we're integrating that um, current events and different um, activities, uh, civics and social engagement as well at a very age appropriate level. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we want to make sure that this is exciting and engaging for our students and our teachers at this level really know what is developmentally appropriate. So um, we do make sure that we are, you know, teaching them how to help others and how to care for the environment in a way that really, you know, helps, um, is appropriate for, for their needs. Um, but we also are up and moving a lot. So students have um, two to three recesses a day with movement breaks all throughout. Um, I think back to when I was in kindergarten and first and second grade, and I remember sitting in individual desks with workbooks. And that's, yes, we still have some workbooks, but it is a very different schooling experience than what um, many of us experienced um, that are now parents. So we are making sure that children can get what they need um, with flexible seating, uh, wobble stools. We have sensory trails for movement breaks, um, all different kinds of um, tactile um, fidgets and, and things to help them uh, be engaged in their learning and meet their needs at the same time. Um, we are a one-to-one -one school, so we, students do have um, an iPad assigned to them that doesn't leave the building, um, but we do integrate technology very thoughtfully. There's only a handful of apps and programs on there that our students use. Um, really, the main one would be um, what you'll hear of later on in this in um, their schooling. You know, about October, we'll roll out Lexia, which is um, just a, a phonics app that is developmentally appropriate and geared towards exactly what they need. Um, and then Seesaw, which is really a digital portfolio where students can take pictures of their work and complete some online tests that then you will have access to at home. Um, but other than that, I know there's always a worry that, you know, students are on these screens all day um, and that is not the case. So we're very thoughtful in when and how we use it um, and for, teach, for students to know that it's a learning tool and not just a toy. So what does learning look like? So I talked through some of the curriculum a moment ago, and it's really broken up into a variety of different ways. So there's um, whole group instruction, as you can see here. So often during the reading time, the teacher will start uh, reading the book all together and students are sitting at the carpet. Then they may partner off and read some sentences together. Um, they'll have small group. And what I was referring to is that differentiated instruction where they may rotate through centers, uh, some with a teacher or parent volunteer um, or special ed uh, teacher. Some might be more self-guided, which would be maybe time on Lexia or doing some handwriting practice um, on their own. We do have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with our teachers um, where students move maybe playing or engaging with their peers and then come over briefly to just do quick, uh, you know, three, four, five minute checks on their learning progress. And that's happening always throughout um, in a way that's pretty seamless that students don't even realize sometimes that um, they're they're getting some learning in when it's just a, a quick, come play this quick game with me. 
so that the teacher can can practice where they are. Um, and so then you can see here we also have um, you know that integrated use of technology, but being very thoughtful. So lots of hands on, uh, lots of manipulatives. Um, there's just you know one quick peek into Miss Bloom's kindergarten room there, and you can see that there's uh, lots of books, lots of blocks, lots of um, building tools, lots of art supplies, so lots of different things so that our students can be creative and engaged um, in their learning in a variety of ways. Um, but as I mentioned before, not just the academics, um, but the social emotional learning is also really key to your child's success here with us at the deck. Um, and we know that each student is coming in um, with a variety of skill sets and needs so that we really want to focus on that whole child. Um, and we, we have um, some universal supports, we call it, where there are things that we teach all students. So even though it may be good for a student that is struggling with um, their self-management or their self-regulation and having really big feelings. We use a program so called social thinking um, and zones of regulation to teach those skills to all students. Um, so that um, thinking bubble there on the bottom are some of the, the skills that your students will learn throughout their time in K2. Um, you know, the size of the problem, group plan, whole body listening, how to be flexible in our thinking or stuck thinking. So these are all lessons that our classroom teachers or um, with the support of our social gen ed social worker and guidance counselor will co-teach in that classroom. Some students we find need more practice with these skills. Um, so they may have some social skill lessons and some small group out of the classroom with some of our other professionals and some teaching them and giving them more opportunities to practice that. Uh, but we want the students to know that it's that all, you know, all we say all zones are OK, um, that, you know, yes, green zone is happy and focused. But some days you might be really worried that, you know, mom, mom is not home today because you know, she she is traveling for work or, um, you know, feeling sad because we forgot our stuffy at home. And that's OK. We can have those emotions. We can talk about how we're feeling, but know that that we can also do our work and what what are some coping skills and strategies we can do at school to, to move on and, and be with our peers um, and have a calm and relaxed body at school. So we, we do a lot of work um, with our students for them understanding their emotions and teaching them how to explain them to us as well. So if, if you're, we may be noticing a student is you know, circling the room today, that's, that's a sign that maybe you're in the yellow zone, that you're a little worried about something. Let's talk about what might be bothering you. Um, so the, the students really get to understand themselves um, as well. But we know that, um, you know, it is a it's kindergarten is a learning opportunity for for everyone and, and young fives and that students make mistakes. Um, so there there will be some big feelings, there will be big emotions. Um, and our job as educators is to make sure that all of your children are safe and learning and happy in school um, and work through when when and if a peer has those big emotions. So um we often have logical consequences. We, you know, it's again, like I mentioned, different from when we were in school. Our first go-to is not let's take away recess. It is let's talk about what this child is feeling, how we can help them so this doesn't happen again. So there's a lot of work that we do with our families um, to talk through, you know, how their child is doing in school. Um, you know, how how are they presenting? How can we work together collaboratively to make sure that we're giving them the skills that they need so that they can, you know make friends and be a good friend um, and, and learn and be successful in school. So when they're not with their young five or kindergarten classroom teacher, um, we do have um, what we often refer to as specials or special area classes where every day the students will have 65 minutes of um, what we would often call in middle school an elective. So those compose of uh, vocal music, art, phys ed or gym, um, and then launch, which is our design thinking class. So launch takes place in our marketplace, and that is a co-taught class. So often it is um, one kindergarten class from Anchor and one kindergarten class from Beacon in, in the large um, workshop area with two of our launch teachers. So the students really enjoy this hands-on class, but it's also teaching them how to be collaborative and working with peers. Um, just the other day I was in there and they were designing um, catapults and so they had to figure out how to get this 
um, this project that they designed uh, to, to move and then take it apart, refine it, work together, add some more weight to it. And, and so they were having fun working through that together. So very unique. Um, our second graders always end their time with a cardboard challenge where they make a whole video game arcade just with cardboard. So the kids get to start to finish, come up with what project they want it to be and work together to, to solve that. Um, you know, last year we also did an egg drop. So, so there's so many different things, but it's really problem solving. So yes, it's, it's, um, hands-on and very creative, but, um, some students struggle with that right off the, in the beginning, because we're having to work as a group and work collaboratively. Um, uh, for many of you, you know, that's probably a large part of your, your days, um, in your careers as well. Our students also have library or media center uh, once a week. So that's separate from these special areas where the teacher will take them to the library and they'll get to check out books and learn about different genres um, as Erickson runs that program. Um, and so you'll, you'll start seeing, usually it's about October, uh, some books come home with your children that they will get to choose to read. And she does a wonderful job of sharing the love of learning and love of literacy with them and giving them choice in the book. So constantly is adding to that library library um, for high interest books for those students. So we touched a little bit on recess and movement breaks. Um, so it's at least twice a day, um, weather permitting. It, it is Michigan. So uh, we go outside. Uh, we try to go outside every day, even in the winter. Um, we always follow the feels like temperature. So if it's um, below zero degrees, then we won't go outside. But um, this is something that we know is really good for the kids to have that fresh air outside. And they're um, you know making snowmen and sliding. And so as soon as that first snowfall hits, they're, they're are very excited. Right now we are getting ready for the first part of spring maybe um, where we'll start having some rain boots um, and some some muddy weather but um, so, but we want to get them outside as much as possible. Uh, but there's lots of transitions and movement throughout the day. Um, you see kids here on the carpet they're doing what we would call a go noodle brain break. Uh, so in the classroom lots of singing and dancing. Um, the students will often come home reciting some of those songs to you um, as well. Um, but we also have a movement trail in the marketplace. We have also have a wonderful PTO who's helped provide us with some big um, gross motor skills um, for other types of movement um, when we have to have indoor recess. So if we call them the, it's the imagination station, which like look like really big Lego blocks um, that we have as many different opportunities as we can just to give them a legitimate brain break um, from that hard learning that they're doing with us every day. Um, there are a few areas on both of the playgrounds um, where we can have some outdoor instruction. So some teachers will, will go out there weather permitting and depending on what their science concepts are um, in kindergarten, not to, to spoil any upcoming projects, but we study plants and worms. So there's a lot more time in the spring when we're outside actually, you know, working in nature um, with some place-based education as well. Okay, so what's the difference between kindergarten and young fives and how can we decide what's best for your child? The first thing we want to look at is um, our, well, first of all, our, our options. Um, we have, we offer an all day young fives and an all day kindergarten. Um, in the past, Dexter was able to offer a half day option, um, but the last few years we haven't had enough um, interest to be able to maintain that program. So the only options this year would both be all day programs. Um, so they would have the same start and end time, uh, whether you choose young fives or kindergarten. Um, and, and we do make sure that their day is, is paced out developmentally, um, slightly different for our young fives, but the only full day options will be available next year. So the first thing that I was going to say is to start with your child's birthday. So if your child's birthday is before May 31st, then they will enroll for kindergarten. If your child's birthday is between June 1st and August 31st, this is where you have a choice. Um, if you're currently enrolled in a preschool or daycare setting, um, most of those teachers will give you a recommendation when it comes to enrollment of, of where they feel, feel your child will be best. Um, best suited. So we're also willing to have that conversation. You know your child best as well. Um, but young fives is really primarily geared towards any student with a birthday after September 1st. So from September 1st to December 1st is where we would strongly encourage you to do the young fives program. 
So there are a few exceptions where a student with um, a, you know, a, a late November birthday may be ready for kindergarten, um, but we would encourage them primarily for young fives. So we gauge those birthdays, we look at those. Um, so you, you most likely will hear from um, someone in our office staff um, if you register for kindergarten, just to make sure that we're putting them in the best fit. Um, unfortunately, if your child's birthday falls after December 1st, they would not be eligible for school at all um, this coming school year. Um, that is a deadline that is determined by the state of Michigan. Um, so we legally cannot enroll anyone with a birthday after December 1st. So the first thing we would check is the birthday. So Young Fives is really the bridge between preschool and kindergarten. So there is less structure uh, than, um, Young Fives has less structure than kindergarten, more so than preschool, but we want to get them, get them ready um, for a, a full day of learning. Um, it moves at a bit of a slower pace. Um, the curriculum in Young Fives is really more about exposure to letters and math concepts and writing. So they, there are Young Fives and early, ele um, early elementary uh, guidelines for us to follow in that program, but it's really about exposure to that. Whereas the end of kindergarten, we are expecting students to be reading um, CVC words, which are like can, cat, ran, um, writing sentences, uh, basic um, addition and subtraction um, up through the number 10. So there are some some specific skills students need to learn in kindergarten. So if you're feeling that your child might need a little more time or a little slower pace, that's where young fives um, would be a good option. Um, so, so we really have to take that child by child specific to see you, you know your child best. Um, and I know that sometimes it's a tough um, call. Um, you may also have one um, feeling now when you're registering um, and, and seeing the classrooms and meeting the teachers, we won't put students into a class until August. So there is some flexibility um, in, in which program you choose. I always tell our parents, if you're on the fence about young fives, I would register for young fives. There's a lot of growth that can happen between now and August when we have to make a final decision, but I'd much rather them have a place in our Young Fives program than register for kindergarten and have to go back and choose Young Fives. So I know that can be um, a, bit, um, a bit tricky at this time when we're in March and we're planning for uh, September, but I would always err on the side of caution. If you're on the fence about it, Young Fives is most likely the right place for your child. Um, we have loving teachers in, in both Young Fives and kindergarten that are going to make sure that every student is feeling welcome and included and successful in their learning. Um, but we know that just that first choice is often the hardest of which program is best. Every year, we also do have a few students uh, on, on either side that enroll in Young Fives, and then they start and are a few weeks in and say, oh, no, nope, they should have been in kindergarten, and we can make that placement move, or vice versa. If your child starts kindergarten and is in there for a few weeks, and we're finding that maybe they're a little more emotional or having a hard time following the group plan um, and listening to instructions, needing a little bit more movement, that we may say, Young Fives is, is a better placement for you. So there, we, we do have that occasionally, but we like to have those conversations throughout the summer um, as we make plans. Um, it also helps us find the best teacher fit too. All right, logistical information about the deck. So our bell schedule is from 814 to 307. That's what it is this school year. We don't anticipate it changing. Um, and then our half day dismissal, which we have, um, about seven or eight half days throughout the year um, is at 11.40. All of the buildings in Dexter, if you are new to us, have similar start and end times. Um, some buildings start a few minutes before or after, but that is because our transportation is all on one bus run. Um, we open our doors at 7.50 in the morning, um, and then students at that point will go to breakfast if they would like breakfast. Otherwise, they're supervised in the hallways by our paraprofessionals and our, our teachers um, before the school day starts. Um, 
We do offer aftercare uh, through our community ed program, but there is nothing before school. Um, a question that we often get, or if students, because it does sound like a long day if your student has not been um, in school before, um, but we do not have nap time. Um, we do know that our students need um, some time to build stamina throughout the year. So things are a lot slower the first month of school. We're learning routines, we're setting up the pacing, there's a lot more quiet time. Some students might fall asleep and then we let them fall asleep. Um, but we wanna make sure that they're able to settle into their learning and then build that stamina up. Um, my daughter is an eighth grader right now and I remember, and she was in full-time daycare as I was working as well. And I still remember her um, first month or so of kindergarten, I would pick her up and we would get in the car and within three minutes telling me how great her day was, she'd be sound asleep. So we, they are so excited and they work so hard all day that, that they're going to be tired and that's okay. It's to be expected. It's all developmental. They're making new friends. They're um, learning new words and vocabulary and meeting teachers and traveling to other places. And so it's a lot of excitement, um, but when they get with you, they may have maybe exhausted and want to fall asleep as soon as you pick them up, or you may be having some more meltdowns at home and that's okay. Um, we know it may not feel good as parents, um, but we often say, you know, we, we get the best of your children during the day. And unfortunately, as parents, you get the rest. Um, you are their safe space. And so, so if it, if you get that, I like to just, just to warn the parents a bit. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong. It doesn't mean they're not in the right place. It just means that we're working on building their stamina and letting them settle in. So transportation, all of our young fives and our kindergartners may ride the bus to school, um, or you may choose. Uh, so at school, then the students, they're dropped up and picked up in the bus hub. So that um, you can't see it from that first picture I had, um, but it comes kind of the backside of anchor. Um, and we have many adults that walk the students to and from the bus hub into their classroom. Um, transportation department doesn't really send out um, your bus route or time uh, until about the week before school starts. So it's usually late August. Um, but once you register for, for kindergarten or young fives, you will begin getting information about enrolling for transportation. It's really important that you register for a space if you'd like to ride the bus um, so that, that we can plan accordingly throughout the summer to get them a space. Um, if you don't register during the window when it is open, there's a chance you may be waitlisted um, until they can add a bus stop or reroute um, the rest of, of the students. Um, there, there will be changing bus routes next year. So for some of our returning families, currently transportation is provided for anyone in Dexter, uh, but because of uh, the, the changing times and the need for more bus drivers um, and staffing concerns. Um, we, we have, there has been discussion at a district level of creating a no transportation zone. So there will be some uh, bus routes changing next year um, and eliminating some pickup stops that have students have primarily ridden a bus before. Um, so that would mean that you would then be required to uh, drop off and pick up your child. Um, but primarily those stops um, that will no longer have bus service will also be within um, a, a, an appropriate amount of time to, to walk to school as, as well, if you choose. We're, we're really um, fortunate that we have several families that we see even still now. And today, especially we had some um, we call it the scooter brigade that comes uh, down the sidewalk. So with buses and scooters and skateboards um, and, and uh, families leave those as well, just at the school um, and walk with their student back and forth. So a little bit of exercise before um, starts this day off in a great time as well. So food and nutrition, uh, students receive 30 minutes of lunch daily. Um, Jen Madison is our food and service director. So she, um, staffs that program and make sure that we have a variety of healthy meals and snacks for our students. Um, teachers will get their schedule in August. So about open house, you'll find out exactly what time your students eat. Um, our lunch periods range from uh, actually should be 1040 to uh, 110. Um, there is always one class that has the brunch time at 1040. And this year it's our young five students. And then um, a later lunch time at 1230 to 110. 
this year that some of our kindergartners. So every year that varies a little bit. Um, if your students have a late lunch, then they'll have an early snack um, or vice versa. Um, lots of opportunity for students to nibble during the day if they need to, especially if they were like my kindergartner and got hangry very much um, that first week of school. Um, we are also very fortunate that this year there is a state grant that is funding all a hot breakfast and lunch for all students that may want it. Um, we have not heard yet if that will be continuing next year. Um, I assume it will be, um, but in the case that it is not, lunch prices will be shared with you before school gets started. Breakfast was previously about $1.75 and then lunch was about $3.50. So there are menus available on our um, our food and nutrition website. So if you wanted to check now to see what some of the options are, um, some are pretty traditional. We'll have hot dogs and chicken nuggets and pizza crunchers, um, which are pretty um, pretty typical foods for our young students and they enjoy all of that. Um, and then other days we'll have special meals that are made in Michigan and it's pulled pork and potato salad, um, or we'll have Chinese um, and fried rice. So it's always a variety in there. And there are lots of days that Ms. Hakel and I walk by and think, oh, it smells mighty delicious in there. Um, but we know that there's also um, many, many of our students that have food allergies or food sensitivities. So there are there's a form available on our website, and we'll have this information shared with you um, if you come and join us for our open house um, that we can talk to the nurse and make sure we have a food safety plan. We have a peanut and dairy free tables as needed in the cafeteria. Um, and we work closely with the nurse and food and food and nutrition to make sure that every student is safe in that space. Uh, but because of that, um, the allergy concerns, we we do have some classrooms that are nut uh, or dairy free. Um, sometimes there are other allergies as well. We really work with families. And so case by case, you will get an information from your teacher at open house that will share what is is and is not permissible due to allergies and other food safety concerns. Um, we don't do whole class snacks. So it would still be asking you to provide a snack to your child Fruits and vegetables are always a safe bet, um, but, but we'll get more information depending on each student's need in your classroom um, as it gets closer. Um, but Food and Nutrition does offer a snack program, which I will say is very helpful um, that in, you could opt for a, a, a snack and a drink. So it could be the students will come every day to come down and they could you prepay for the school year, and then students could get a bag of pretzels or animal crackers or fresh fruit or vegetables, um, and then a meal for juice box as well. So it does take the thinking out of it if you're often like me, and like, oh, that would be very easy to just, and students can go and get their own choice um, as, they, as they go through the school year. Um, birthday treats, we no longer um, bring in any birthday treats for students. There's just so many allergies and we try to do celebrations and such that just are not food dependent. We just, again, wanna make sure that everyone is safe. Um, we also wanna be equitable in what families can and can't provide. Um, it's very hard for one student whose parents may make, you know, a, a, two dozen cupcakes to come in and share and then another family who's not able to to provide that so we want to make sure that we're just equitable and we say no birthday treats for our students katie and i you know celebrate the students we come and give them um, a special book that they always like to pick from um, a pencil teachers do different things like writing each other birthday cards or being the lucky duck or student of the day that varies from classroom to classroom but we still make their day special just try to not have it around food um, we also know that it is very tricky um, as you're trying to um, engage different peers and friends outside of school, but we ask that teachers only pass out invitations if it's involving the whole class so that we don't have hurt feelings. Um, we also try to not um, have our staff be in the middle and, and passing emails back and forth. Um, sometimes that puts our staff in an uncomfortable position as well. So we do have um, a very active Facebook page and lots of community events where you can come with your child and meet their classmates and their peers and make uh, natural connections that way um, if you don't want to invite the whole class. 
Uh, so I did mention um, our school nurse, Rachel Pearsall. So she will help us um, and answer any of your um, health and medical questions. So we know that students have a variety of needs. We have um, students in our own building with diabetes and seizure disorders and allergies and asthma and medication. So there's um, you know, whatever your child may need um, support in, we're here to help. And we will make sure that we have a thoughtful plan that all stakeholders and teachers and special area and lunch monitors are aware of so that you feel confident in sending your students to us on a daily basis. Um, so she will be with us next week at our open house. So I encourage you to stop by if your child does have medical needs or you have questions about their safety so that we can um, set up a meeting in time to connect um, and get those allergy plans um, in place as well. Um, part of your enrollment process is making sure that all of your immunizations are up to date. So she will also be following up and checking in on that. Um, if you are choosing to not immunize and have a waiver through the health department, she can help you coordinate that as well. In August, um, the Washtenaw County Health Department does do on-site hearing and vision screening. Um, if you're not able to make it to one of the dates, and usually mid to, eight, mid to late August, um, they'll also do um, a beginning of the year screening um, with all of our students um, in young fives in kindergarten. Just to catch anything um, that, that perhaps um, your pediatrician or you hadn't noticed from their previous school setting. I know there's been lots of families that have found this, the screening helpful in catching early vision problems or making, you know, seeing, you know, lots of students have tubes in their ears and making sure that those are still um, helpful and making sure that your student is getting adequate access um, through hearing and vision. So that's Rachel's email there. Again, she'll be with us next week to answer any of your questions. Um, and as you are completing your enrollment throughout the summer, she'll be reaching out and connecting to. All right. So um, another helpful, um, another helpful group as you're enrolling in kindergarten, it would be our community education department. Um, they are housed out of Bates. So they run our after school care program. So if you are looking for um, aftercare, they do offer, offer that service, I believe it's until about six o'clock in the evening. Students would gather as they do this year in our cafeteria. We take attendance with um, their aftercare workers and the staff members, and then they'll walk from the deck to Bates, um, and that's where the, they're housed there. So you would then pick them up from Bates. Um, so they will also have some information for you next week. Um, I am not sure when enrollment begins for that for next school year. I know it is a program that does fill up pretty quickly um, for aftercare, but there are other, other local um, daycares, Morningstar um, in Kidsland um, and some others that will also offer, offer some after school care. So if you have um, another, perhaps another younger child somewhere else, um, they often provide transportation as well. Um, from our building to theirs. Um, we also encourage families to sign up for Safety Town. So information for this is usually late March um, and you'll sign up right through the website. Um, it's called ELEO to register. Um, and so that is, I believe it's a like two week, 10 day program for just a couple of hours. It really gives our incoming students uh, a tiptoe taste into what it is like to be a student. Um, we have, you know, visits to with um, our liaison officer, uh, Jared Wiesel, who comes and just talks about, you know, safety. They practice riding bikes. Um, the fire department comes, um, but they also get comfortable in our building. So more so than anything, they see the setting, they see the classroom, they're dealing, they're meeting some peers, um, a lot of our community ed staff helps support that um, or preschool teachers as well. So some familiar faces to get them used to coming into the school every day um, and doing a little learning and a little play um, and then going home. So uh, Safety Town is, is really fun. And Katie and I also try to pop in and read a story um, and meet the students too. So while we're um, having your students um, in their classrooms all day, parents often ask, okay, well now what, what can I do? How can I help? So we have a wonderful PTO. Um, they do a lot of fun and engaging activities. Um, we just finished a, an amazing STEAM night. We have art and literacy night. 
They do fundraising and different activities um, like overnights at Kalahari and did big, which is Zap Zone. So just community building events. Um, and then any proceeds they raise goes directly back to our students. So if you're looking to help get engaged, uh, the PTO would be a wonderful place to start. Um, they cover the cost of all of our field trips to our students. Um, so even now we have Hudson Mills coming up and we did a second graders uh, going to Hill Auditorium to see some musicals. So um, all of that fundraising goes directly to our students to either um, uh, pay for materials and events and supplies needed above and beyond um, what, what we can provide, um, but also those wonderful assemblies and field trips. Um, you'll get weekly communication. We send out what we call the Deck Digest. It's typically every Sunday afternoon with just kind of a glance at the week ahead, some updates, some reminders on different community events. Teachers will also typically send out a weekly or bi-weekly information about what's been happening in their classroom. Many of them use Seesaw, which is, like I said, that digital platform. So you can have the app right on your phone um, and they'll take a picture of students just reading um, at their centers and, and, and link it to you so you can get a glimpse as to what your student's doing on a daily basis. So that's a really powerful tool because um, I know it's, it was not all that long ago where it was very hard for me to send my own child um, off to the school and wonder what is their day like because when you pick them up and you ask how is it going and they say great or fine or I loved recess, sometimes you don't get very much. Um, so we try to communicate frequently and often and enough to, to let you know what is happening in the classroom. So we also welcome you to come in and volunteer. Um, each classroom, again, usually about October, so we can make sure students are getting settled into their learning um, and they're into a routine. Um, but, you know, maybe it's alphabet flashcards or doing some different celebrations or playing math games. So, um, to, there's lots of opportunities to come and volunteer, whether it's with us in the office, behind the scenes, if you just want to be a copy mom, because you know your child won't do very well if you're popping in and out, then we can put you to work to help behind the scenes, or if you'd rather be with the students um, and playing games um, or engaging in art activities, we can use you that way as well. So um, it might mean that you have, you know, one one day off a month and you'd like to come in and that's fine or you may have more opportunities to say want to come in you know every morning for 10 minutes there there's no judgment we will take whatever you can um, but we just want you to be active in your child's education and so we want to partner with you for for those things um, beyond our school PTO, the uh, educational foundation of Dexter is also um, a great support for us. They also provide other um, experiences and materials. Most recently for, for our students at the deck, um, some more books for our literacy library. Um, so that's another organization you can get involved with if you choose. That's much more at a district level because they support all grades K-12. So I've given you a lot of information, trying to keep it to an hour because I know it was so nice and wanted to get outside and it's probably dinner and that often witching hour of bath and bedtime. Um, so what you do next, um, we hope that you come and join us in person and check out our building, bring your child with you. Um, on next Tuesday um, from 5.30 to 7. This is a very casual open house. You do not have to come the whole time. Um, if you want to know that your child um, may be a bit anxious, that's fine. Come towards the end um, and, and spend just a little bit of time in to, to get a, a quick tour of the building as well. Um, but we have it set up somewhat like a scavenger hunt. Um, so they're wandering around and looking for the hidden pigeon um, from Mo Willems' favorite book. Um, and you'll get to meet any of our teachers from our young fives and kindergarten classrooms, see inside the setting, um, see, see the space of the marketplace, the cafeteria, you know, just walk around and be present in there. Um, so again, very casual. Don't You don't have to be there the whole time, um, uh, but we will be there to answer any questions as well. Um, but then enrollment will start the following Monday on March 11th. So everything can be done completely online now. Um, we used to have certain days where you'd have to come into the building. That is no longer the case. Um, so anything through that enrollment, once the window opens, you can start filling out your information. Um, I will say that sometimes parents will fill it out at eight o'clock at night and say, oh my gosh, I didn't get, I didn't get what I needed to finish enrollment. 
That's because our secretaries then need to go through and like an approval process and they will send you an information when they're back in the office. So if there's something that doesn't feel like it's quite done, I would just give it about 24 hours for our staff to make sure um, that it's coming through properly. And then you'll get, um, you know, certain code to, to finish out through power school. So um, if it's over the weekend, again, you know, there, there is some manpower behind that enrollment process. If you are considering joining us from outside of Dexter, the School of Choice window is open right now. Um, it actually closes tomorrow, um, and then families will be notified the week after um, if there is space. Um, there is a second window that will open in late summer, um, but we don't have the dates for that yet. So um, if you are considering joining us from a different county, I would recommend enrolling now um, and then be able to make a choice later on rather than missing the first window. Uh, for school of choice. So the paperwork that is needed, we do need to see the birth certificate. Um, so you can um, scan a copy of this in or take a photocopy of whichever um, your birth certificate that has the seal. That's what our teachers are, our, our secretaries are looking for. Um, we also need proof of residency in Dexter, which includes um, if you're renting either a copy of your lease and a utility bill, um, if you own your home, a closing or mortgage statement or tax statement and a utility bill as well. Um, we did a couple different forms um, to proof of residency. If you have questions about these, again, Sarah and Tori can walk you through um, what exactly that would be that you need. Um, we will need a copy of their immunizations um, and any vaccinations um, or a waiver with the county if you opt out. Um, and then for you as adults, we need a copy of your driver license or passport. Okay, so it's not as much information as you think, and most of it can all be um, put right into our PowerSchool portal. So once you come visit us and you've made your decision, you've got everything enrolled, then it's what can we do at home? Well, if you join us next week, um, you will get a little um, get ready for kindergarten kit that has some tips and tricks in it um, and some things to practice. Um, one big thing, though, is to have your students practice saying their first and last name. Um, especially if they're going to get hot lunch um, or ride the school bus. Um, students, they get nervous and they may tell us their first name but not know their last name or not say it very clear. So practice saying their first and last name. Um, but just in, read with your child at home, get them excited to talk about books, um, have them do some fine motor practice of coloring and Play-Doh. Um, Rolling dice is a good thing. Playing games and taking turns and letting them know it's okay to lose. Um, so those basic games of um, Uno or Trouble or a Hi Ho Cheerio. So any of those games that they enjoy playing um, and, then, and then practice what happens if they don't win or having to take turns with each other. So those are all skills of um, working on following directions. Um, we also really, you know, focus on some self-help skills. We want some independence um, in the bathroom, primarily um, cleaning up themselves um, and pulling their pants up and down. Um, we also, you know, encourage practicing, you know, having lunch at home over the summer. So if you're going to have a um, pack of lunch, have them practice, you know, using that lunch box and unzipping it and, those bento boxes are very cool, but they're also really hard for little fingers. So the more they can practice that or opening cheese sticks. We have a lot of people in the cafeteria, but the more independent um, your student is with those things, the, the better. Um, and that will gain that independence, but it will take some practice. Um, also, you know, we're, we're at the point now you might not need a winter coat. This is usually the time I say it's okay to keep practicing putting on our snow pants um, and buttoning them and zipping our coats up. Practicing putting those things on um, are really are really helpful. Um, I know that it's um, easy to to default as parents to start doing it for them, but we want to help build that independence um, so that they can take care of their own things and their own selves. Because when there are twenty of them um, in a classroom, it may take a while for the teacher to come and help them. So we want them to be able um, to practice that as well. Okay, um, small responsibilities around the house as well. Um, and then just building excitement for school. So we want them to be happy coming to us and uh, and for you to feel comfortable sending them to us. So um, there's th these little things here and there to get them, you know, talking about it, driving by the school, stopping by the playground if you're able, um, just so they're familiar with that setting will really help. Okay. Um, and as far as social emotional skills, 
um, you know, we, you know, one to two step directions, you know, any interaction to get along um, with others. Uh, if they're, if you're doing, you know, play dates or social groups, that's why some things like Safety Town are so helpful over the summer. Um, talking about their emotions and how they're feeling and, and pointing out if they're, if they're nervous or anxious or scared and how they can, they can cope with that. Um, helping them persist on a task if something is hard um, so that they're not um, showing frustration right away and working, trying to help work through that. Um, and just engaging in a lot of social conversation and cooperative play. So we want them to feel good about themselves and know um, that, you know, how they can work with other people um, and read facial expressions. So sometimes it might sound silly for us as adults to say, oh, I'm really frustrated, but that's okay. They are learning to use that, um, know that language and see matching the face with it um, to, to help them understand themselves better too. And there's some other things on here that you will get if you'd like to read some articles. So now, um, again, like I said, lots of information. Hopefully we covered everything, um, but we have uh, have a few minutes for some other questions. So Ms. Hakela, I think you've been fielding uh, anything on the side there. I've been fielding, mo yes, I've been fielding most of the questions. One that just came up, how many students are typically in a kindergarten class? Um, we have been fortunate that our kindergarten classes have stayed relatively small. Um, so this year they're at about 21, 22. Um, and so that's been about the average. We try to keep class sizes low. Our young fives classes um, range anywhere from like 16 to 18. So they're a bit smaller as well. Um, you know, there could be, a, you know, a year where we have 24 or 25 students in a classroom, but we're very fortunate to have um, a district that wants to make sure that our class sizes stay low in the early elementary grades. Mm -hmm. um, any resources for before school care? Um, we, the school system does not provide any resources for before school care, which I know, um, I know a lot of parents are working earlier than when we start, um, but we do have that drop off at 750 so that parents can just go through the drop off loop, drop off and students can come in in the building at that time. Um, how can I access the recording of this Zoom? Uh, this will be posted online um, right on the, the main Dexter website. Um, our communications director will get the um get the recording of it as soon as we end and it will most likely be uploaded, I would say within the next day or two. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, if an older sibling is already an anchor or beacon, will the new student be on the same side? Yes, sorry, we didn't weren't weren't clear on that. Uh, we do we do try to keep siblings in the same learning community. Um, young fives will always be at Beacon, um, so then they will then follow the following year if they're an anchor student, um, go with their sibling that way. Yep. But we try to make sure that families stay um, in that same wing together. Um, there's some questions about teacher requests. So we, we don't have, um, you know, an evaluation or a teacher or specific teacher requests. We try to match learning styles with the best teachers. Um, so you'll get, once you enroll, um, usually in the spring, there's um, a Google form that comes out that we send to all families, our current students um, and incoming, and we ask for your input and feedback. It's There's a few check boxes about how your child learns best, some things that we can um, you know, we can do to help support them as learners um, and so forth. Um, and then if they have a peer that you'd like them to be with, sometimes that's very helpful um, to know from Jenkins or Morningstar to have peers together. Um, we have that that too. So um, so you get a questionnaire, but we ask to not to request specific teachers. Um Emily asked a question about staffing at the deck. Uh, we are fully staffed aside from, I think, one paraprofessional position. So we're really lucky at our building. We have um, a lot of great people that are working with us. And we often have 
um, parents that are interested in joining our team as well. Um, so if any of you are interested in coming and working with us, we'd be happy to talk to you about some of the options that we have available regularly. Um, it's been really fun for quite a few of our parents to join the team and be able to um, work in their child's school. Um, what is the difference between Anchor and Beacon and why is there a choice? So, so there's not a choice. Uh, we are one, um, one joint building. Um, previously, Anchor and Beacon um, were two separate elementary schools. Um, and it was sort of a random draw whether you went to Anchor or Beacon. Um, and they had different principals and they were, were slightly different. And then um, just before COVID, um, Beacon added on to Anchor and created the deck. Um, and so now we have merged into one, one large facility. Um, so Katie and I oversee the entire facility. It is now one elementary school. Um, the teachers do similar activities. We have the same field trips, same assemblies. Um, it's just split into basically, that's what we like to refer to it as learning communities, just so there aren't 10 sections of kindergarten together. Um, this way they can get to know the teachers on one wing um, and move up uh, that way. Um, so I know there is some some history with being being two and now the same, um, but but it all is is all the same. So if you are placed in anchor or beacon, um, that's um, it's still all one complex. You'll get one newsletter from us, and everything will be the same. Um, Colleen asked about busing. Will all grades and ages be on the same bus? Um, all grades and ages are on the same bus, busing in from different neighborhoods. Um, the bus drivers do have the younger students sit in the front of the bus so they could be supervised a little closer. Um, there is not typically an aide on the bus as well. So the driver is um, the one managing that school bus. Um, young fives is on the beacon side. There was a question about um, are there young fives on both sides? Um, young fives is currently on the beacon yeah. side of the building. They're the one, they're the one um, unique situation. Um, so the early elementary special ed program is on the anchor side and Young Fives is on the beaker, beacon side. Um, just because there's only five sections, um, it's really works well for them to be collaborative and all together. Um, previous to that, they were scattered among among all wings. So so that's that's the one unique difference. Well, we'll stay on just a couple more minutes if anyone has questions. Um, thank you for joining us. We really did try to keep it to just an hour. So sorry for the information overload, uh, but we hope to see you all in person with your young children uh, next week. So thank you all. Right, guys. Any quick tips or resources that a family brand new to Dexter should check out? Um, I would say to join our school page, school Facebook page. There's a lot of announcements on there. Um, some families meet up, there are activities there. Um, so that would be one resource to check out. Yeah. Um, the website also, the community ed uh, website, I would say that would also be a good thing to see what kind of classes, and even if it's not for right now, but in the future to see like, oh, there's a like young Rembrandts and Minecraft and different other um, types of programming and classes. Um, so that would be be another place too. Yeah. Um, there's a question about busing. Do the young ones get dropped off first? Um, actually, the older students, the Creekside and the high school students get dropped off first. And then the bus comes to our bus hub, which is off Dan Hoy, and drops off students who attend um, Wiley, Mill Creek, and the deck. So they all get dropped off there and they walk up to their buildings. And we have adults out there ready to greet students and point them into the direction of the building. And especially in the beginning of the year, we guide them all the way in. Um, we know that that's new and can be overwhelming. So we work with students on that. I think that's all. Thank you for joining us. We're um, we're excited to welcome the the newest incoming class. 
Have a great evening, everyone. See you next week.